So face-to-face -face recruitment is very important, and I want to hope that you are part of that as well in what you're doing. The third thing, or the fourth thing that he brought up, which I thought was fascinating because you, you see it all over the place, is that when a movement begins to happen, the people that are part of this movement has been transformed. They automatically gather together and they create community, fellowships. And in those fellowships, they begin to live out the things that the, that the message is telling them to do. They try things out. They, they live, they help each other to, to live the life that they have lived. They live parallel to the society that's there and they're doing something that will change and be different that will also bring about a change in the society. But they don't go right back into it. They live within their community and they try these different things. Jesus spent three years with his disciples, living very closely. In that, he was training them. He was working with them. But they were living out the message that Jesus had been preaching. Day-to-day -day activity, day-to-day -day thing. And I truly believe that's what the church is. The church is where all of us come together, a fellowship, usually on the, should be on a small scale, where we're living out the faith. We are living different to where the world is at. We are living in such a way where we're saying we're going to impose all of the Christian principles, all the principles that Jesus gave us, and we're going to live it in this small community. And then we're going to try it out, and we will be different. And when you do it, you will be different. Which brings me to the next point. And that is... After you Christ started creating the community, every one of those movements had opposition. Each one of those movements, there was persecution that came in from outside. Why? Because when you begin to live a message that is different, all of a sudden you come in conflict with the powers to be. Because you're providing them with an alternative way to live and to be. Isn't that what Jesus did? Here you had all of these people living under the law and they were oppressed and they disappointed, destroyed to some degree. And Jesus came, had a new message, they were living a new message and the people he was with were set free. They were different, they were transformed. And people begin to look from the outside in and saying, that's what we want. And so what happens is the powers to be were going to lose their power to something that was going to be better that is there. So. What does that mean for us? Are you living in community? Something I love about all of it, and I love about apostolates, I love about young disciples, is that all of these things that I was saying here are taking place. There is a clear message. There is a passion that I have not seen for many, many years in the, in the lives of, in your, own, in your personal lives. I see face-to-face -face recruitment. I see the communities coming together and that you are fellowshipping and you're living. But I also want you to be aware when things start taking off, and they already have taken off, that you will be facing persecution and you will face op opposition. You're going to face opposition from the devil because he just does not want to see this happen. And opposition comes with sickness, with events that may not be to your liking. Uh, struggles in your families, struggles in your situation. But the night good news is, is that the Lord will always carry you through those oppositions. And what the story of Jesus is, is that he was kept having the power encounters with the powers to be, with the Pharisees and with Satan. And when it came down to the very big power encounter where they crucified him on the cross, what happened there? Salvation for the world happened. The persecution was not a persecution that, that where everything, he got out of the persecution, but the persecution actually exposed the evil in the world. And as a result, people got to see the power of God and got to see a life that was being transformed. Yes, I ask you the question, God is going to be doing something wonderfully here at Olivet University, through you in the world. Uh, he's setting you aside. He's looking forward. He's working, going to work through you and in you. But I ask you to look at these five things and to ask you, 
am I preparing myself in these things? Because when the movement does happen, these things will be taking place. And am I preparing myself to do that? What can I do right now? Continue to do what you're doing. Be faithful in doing it. And just do it. I want to end with a story, one of my favorite stories, that, that illustrates that better than anything else. I don't know if you ever heard the story of Larry Walters. Larry Walters is a, uh, was a truck driver that lived in Los Angeles. And Larry Walters um, lost his job. And all he did day in and day out was to sit in the backyard and do nothing. And one day he decided enough was enough. And he had an idea. He said, you know, I am going to get myself my lawn chair and I'm going to put this in the middle of my backyard and I'm going to put some weather balloons on my chair and I'm going to let the weather balloons lift me up about 50 yards up in the air and I'm going to just fly around my neighborhood and just watch and see what everybody's doing. So he did that. He got himself a chair. He got himself 50 weather balloons filled with helium. And he got himself, he put in a little, he tied himself to the chair just in case he went a little too high. He got himself a little BB gun. Uh, in case he did go too high, he could shoot one or two of the balloons <laughs> and to come on down. When they started, his friends were holding him down. He got in, and they let go. Larry Walters went into the air, but he didn't stop at 50 yards. He didn't start by 100 yards. He didn't stop at 500 yards in the air. It wasn't until he was 2,000 yards up in the air, 10,000 feet, before he came to stop. By the way, this is a true story, okay? He was, here he was, a man in, the, in a uh, garden chair over Los Angeles, 2,000 or 10,000 feet up in the air. True story. An airplane was coming into Los Angeles airport, and the pilot said to his passengers, if you look to the right-hand side, you'll see a man in a lawn chair. <laughs> the winds blew him from the west east side of LA over to LX airport. They had to close down the airport for three hours while Larry Walters was with his lawn chair over LX airport. <laughs> the problem was is the BB guns weren't strong enough to shoot through the weather balloons. And so it took about three to four hours before they lost some helium and he started to come down. And it was about 7 o'clock in the evening when already it was, it was dark. And he landed somewhere. We don't know where in L.A., but he, he landed. And when he got there, all of the, poli all of the uh, TV stations had embarked upon him. And it was a bright light with all the lights there. And as soon as they got out, the policemen, of course, were there. And uh, they were taking him off, uh, taking him away. But before they could go... They, all the, poli all the uh, media came to him with their, uh, with their um, um, yeah, microphones and they started asking him questions. He says, Larry Walters, were you scared? And he says, yep, I was scared. He says, uh, would you do this again? No. <laughs> he says, and then they asked the question, he says, why did you do this? And Larry Walters said, and I love the statement. He says, you know what? I just couldn't sit there any longer. I had to do something. And I want to ask you and I want to encourage you to do something. You may shoot over the goal. And you may do some crazy things. <laughs> and that well, people will be talking about you in years to come. But I want to encourage you, do it. Do it for the kingdom of God. And God will glorify it, and he will use it, and people will come to know him. My prayer is that this, when this revival breaks out here, and it's beginning, that he will use us in a way that 
nobody's ever been used before. Let us pray. Oh, Father, I just want to thank you for these students, for these people that you have allowed me to have a relationship with. I pray that you have your hand on each one here as they are doing the things that, that you want them to do, and that you will be using these things as, as more and more people come to know you. I pray, Father, for a spirit of humility that comes over this place, that we all realize it's not us, but it's you. I pray for a wisdom to know what we need to do and to do that. I pray for patience, that we continue to do the things that are right and do it day in and day out. And I pray for, for ability to stand strong in the face of opposition, that we don't lose faith, but that we continue to trust in you, and that we will build each other up and stand with one another as we face the opposition. And I pray as you do great things, that you will be doing, that you will be able to use us, and that we can be your vehicles for whatever you have in store for San Francisco, New York, United States, and for the world. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen.